Everything's down! Everything's down! Nothing works! As the radio still does nothing but static. We are... We can send out a signal relay, but we won't be able to get any signal back. We can send out a distress, but we won't know if anyone catches it or hears of it. Do I have anything with me that would amplify the signal? Uh, you don't believe you have anything that would really help in that situation. You... One of the dwarves. Yeah. <laughs> one, one of the dwarfs says, "What about scouting parties, sir? What? It, what how about we sentry this with our radio signals?" The general says, "Good idea. Good idea." As he hits a console button, to which the entire dashboard kind of lights up with these magical runes encrusted in this battle wagon here to the point where basically you see that it's like a radio signal for everybody all the other bikes like pop up you know who's online and who's not online kind of deal um, the numbers pop up accordingly seven eight four one two m3 g3 and he says, and the rest of us in here. That's all that's left of your crew? He says, yes, we had 20. Uh, you can see the four that were scheduled for the Delta II tank that was exploded of all black, all presumably gone. One of them's missing in the tank that's upside down. And the three destroyed bikes are black, of course, as expected. Okay. He says, everyone keep a post out. I want eyes and ears on everything. All of them give their oorah in, in uh, reply. I want to try and peek out and see if I can get a better look at the monster. Um, one of the... One of the pilot dwarfs in there happens to lean up and kind of slide this vent-like window to the side instead of even going near the hatch. You can now see outside, to an extent, motions to the other windows. As he goes back to looking at this terminal, trying to keep track of everybody. Do I see anything? It is a mass of dust and storm right now. A lightning strike will illuminate everything around you every once in a while. How long do these things normally last? He says, until they take something away. To which you hear another one of the giant bellows, and you look, everyone quickly posts to the sides as a lookout. You just see literally massive sand dunes shifting around. Then you hear the dwarf off to the left side. Over here, over here! You all kind of clutter around the windows to try and peek out and see as much as you can. The one, there's one small bike off in the distance, farther away from everybody else. Uh, to which you see these sand dunes kind of circling it. Is there anyone in it? You hear the dwarf on the radio comms. They're over here near me, sir. They're over here. Four. He seems very panicked. The general, gets on the, the general gets on the comms and tries to tell him to keep his ground and hold steady. I want to I wanna exit the hatch and try and distract him away from the dwarf. What do you, what do you plan on doing? One of the pilots looks at you like you're crazy. Getting them away from the, getting them away from your man. If I can, if I can keep them busy, he might be able to make a break for it over here and be safe. And then what? Pick us off over here? No, I think I'm pretty well armored enough to handle this thing. I can't let you do that, Bis. One of them tries to restrain you from exiting. And why not? It's not. 
like, and not as though as one of you will die. Yes, but the less casualties, the better, the general says. I have a plan. And what would that plan be? To nothing I would like to share with you. I'm sorry. General seems to have lost his patience. Let her go if she's intent on going. The other dwarves stand down and unlock the hatch, but don't open it. I'm going to crawl out with my teleportation amulet and he, well, getting ready to grab it. You get out onto, onto the top of this tank. You can see these sand dunes are just circling this lone four in his little bike, to which another strike of lightning, as if on cue, illuminates this one of these sand dunes as this giant, as you can see it now, looks like a giant rock-like serpent rise up from underneath this sand dune and burrow back underneath the sand. I'm going to get off of the tanker and kind of try and run away from everything so they don't get one of the tankers. And okay. grip, the, grip the amulet to try and activate it. Alright, you start running off just away from the of the of all this debris and vehicles. Screaming. I would like to be screaming to try and get their attention. You try you start waving and yelling and trying to get their attention. These as far as you can tell, these beasts haven't even noticed you exist. I'm going to be very stupid. I'm going to strike one of them with my little magic amulet thing. Your ice staff? Yes. All right. It's a conductor. I'm going to try and hit one of them with it. You start making your way back over towards the bike. You get about halfway there, and literally one of these things breaks up out of the ground. This thing is monstrous. You underjudge how large these things are. This thing is, oh, at least a good it, this thing looks to be bigger than the payload on the back of the tank I want to activate my my, my teleportation thingy <laughs> alright this thing scares you off you instantly grab this teleportation sliver and you are instantly teleported back you are in your little closet okay I want to get out and see relic if opens the door and sees a cowering dwarf covered in sand <laughs> can I help you <laughs> I need to find out what these things are. They're terrifying. What things? And why are you purple? <laughs> I want to explain to them everything that happened. You ex and see if they have any information. You explain to Relic and Sabrak, but they, they don't really have any sort of knowledge uh, with rock serpents or rock worms in the desert. Uh, they are very familiar with all types of known life in the desert, but a rock serpent is a little far-fetched. He says, is it like a, would it be like a sentient golem or something? Golems don't normally form worms or serpents. I'm not sure, but they have these things terrified, and they stand huge. At least compared to me, they're huge. And they look like rocks, and they come in giant sandstorms, and, and, and they take a dwarf pretty much every time they come. They take a dwarf? Every, that's what they made it out to be, that they, they take someone or something every time they come through. Well, what is it? Someone or something? That's a big difference something. there. Well... I don't I just know they're huge, they're scary, and I use the teleportation thing to get away. That's all I know. <laughs> okay. Um. Well, Finn, sounds like we need to figure out what these things are before we start sending another caravan out there. We'll, we'll try to do our best as Relic and Sabrak start glancing through some manuals. They start doing some research. Are you just... Are, is everyone okay? Are you just staying here? Are you opting out? 
No, what's the they, plan? they all seem to be okay. I'm going to go back. I just needed a way out of there because I kind of misjudged how big these things are. So I kind of chickened out and used the teleportation thing to get away. <laughs> well, he says, well... Okay, he says, not sure you know how these things work. He takes the crystal from you and hands you a new one and says, they're like a one-time use now. Oh, okay. Well, then send me back so I can I can help help my dwarven brethren. You reluctantly go back into the closet, and you are instantly teleported back in the middle of the storm. It is still storming. You cannot see anything. Is there anything around me? Not in the immediate area. It is too hazy, too windy, too dusty. Lightning still strikes, thunder still crashes. Did they already take the, the thing they were after? You don't know. You you can't see anything. Mm. I am going to do something really weird. I am going to use my, my little ice thing and try and make a little shield around myself until everything calms down. Alright, you... I'm pretty sure you can form somewhat of a ice shield with all this dust in the air. You manage to, as best as you can, kind of frost over all this dust and debris that's kind of floating and flying by to somewhat encase yourself somewhat in a little layer of frost. It's not much, but it will at least shelter you from the wind, you believe, for now. You can kind of see through it. Uh, to which you, the entire thing kind of shifts about three feet in the sand as you now notice something has pushed you or something has made you move. I jump around to see what what it is. Ready to fight. You now start adjusting your vision and another sand dune comes tunneling by you and pushes this little ice sphere you've made just to the side. I am about to be attacked. I, I, I feel I'm, I'm threatened by these things. <laughs> I can't see well enough to make it back to one of the tankers, so I'm going to go ahead and grab one of my pick, mall, my pick mall and get ready in case one of them attacks me. As you kind of ready yourself, one of them goes straight for you, kind of just bumps the thing head on to which gives a good crack and shatters about a good fourth of your little ice sphere. Not as if trying to ram you, but enough to push you out of the way enough for this thing to fragilely shatter. To an extent. Can I see anything around that it might be particularly after? As far as you can tell, you just see this one tunneling sand thing going after you, or pushing you around, or studying you, or whatever you want to call it. Huh. When it comes near me, I want to try and smash it. Next time it runs by me. Alright, you believe it's coming to push you around again. I get ready to jump and smash. Alright, jump to, well, roll to smash. Dwarf smash. Fifteen. All right, you give it all your gut, and this hammer goes straight into the sand. You just essentially push the sand down like you're pushing down a like a water balloon. It really doesn't do anything. You just flatten the sand. So I missed. You didn't the make. Thing. It doesn't look like you made contact with anything or whatever this is. Is deeper down than you thought it was. This thing essentially goes under you, and you feel yourself rise up and down as this thing went underneath you. Do I see or notice anything? No, you just flattened some sand. You really didn't do anything. Yeah, another strike of lightning lights up, and you now see the caravan just not too far from you. You were closer than you were when you first teleported. Okay, I, I'm going to try and make it back to the caravan. Alright, as best to your knowledge, you make your way over to where you think you saw the caravan, and you 
without any much trouble, you've reached the tank that's upside down, the one that's embedded in the sand. Is there any way for me to get into it? The hatch is basically on the front of it, which is just above the sand. It's literally like nosedived in the sand. Okay, I want to try and open it. Uh, you find it locked. But you were pretty sure there were people inside. I'm pretty sure there were people inside? As far as you can tell, there was, the, from the radios, from what the general told you, there were people in this one. I'm going to start wailing on the door. You give about three or four, five good knocks and start screaming, and the hatch instantly flings open. What? How do you... Did, and, and instinctively, they grab you and just haul you inside. What are you doing out here? How'd you get over trying, here? Trying to figure out what I'm up against, and I ran. They both kind of give you a look like a dwarf running, really? I didn't say I ran well. <laughs> They, uh, instantly post back to the windows. M3 and G3, they announce themselves as. Okay. The storm kind of <laughs> starts to die down as you hear another one of those large bellows. Over here, M3 chimes up. You kind of peer out the windows and see... Uh, one of these rock creatures emerge once more and literally hound down like literally like a giant sandworm would rise up and go down to engulf its prey it literally swallows one of these bikes and tunnels underneath the sand and just disappears the storm starts to clear up instantly Wind stops. Who did you settles. lose? I think is that. Any, I think is that was. Any, any trace of what of the hole or where it, where he went? There is a good dent in the sand, but the hole looks like it's filled itself up with sand, naturally. But no, the whole the whole little single bike is just missing now. I think that was seven. He says. Alright. G3 presses a button on the console. Was that Seven? Who, who, who was that? And you hear just a panic of all the dwarfs talking in, in concern and disbelief all at once over the radio. Nothing really is discernible until the general shouts enough for them to... Shut up! Stop! Everyone silent! He confirms that. That was Seven. Seven's missing. Missing, he stresses. Some of the dwarfs still chatter over there. I can't believe it. Oh my gosh, she's dead. You know, just panicked chatter. Hmm. Is there any form of trace of where these things are going? Just the, the dent in the sand? It's just a divot in the sand. There's no... It doesn't look like a tunnel or anything physical. Uh, some of the dwarves actually open up and pop back out of their little vehicles. Everything is settled. There's no more weather. Bright blue skies, just as pretty as it was when you got here. You instantly see eight, the bike that was closest to seven. Just, you see him holding his head in his hands like he can't believe what just happened. I want to get out and try and investigate over where the, the little bike was taken. Uh, you and about two other dwarfs on just the single bikes kind of instinctively run over to eight and wherever seven was. Uh, by the time you make it over, the two of the dwarfs are actually just straight up digging, like as if to get their friend back or something. They just start digging as hard as they can. And a cat I'll, join the, I'll, I'll join them in the dig, trying to find a tunnel or something I can follow. Uh, 
eight stands posted as if ready to radio someone in case. But the three of you just start digging through just just sand. There's nothing. It's like you're not really gaining any ground here. You just keep piling out, continuing this divot of sand. Until one of you hits something hard. Kind of clanged like a little bit of metal. They continue to hurry, hurriedly excavate its helmet. Seven! They, they keep digging as hard as they can until a small pile of sand shifts and there's a hand reaching out of the sand. You all uh. quickly work together and excavate, literally. Uh, the dwarf uh, signed seven. It's just buried in the sand. You quickly dig him out. He is okay. He seemed to have been slightly knocked out about. He comes to. And he just looks horrified. I'm not sure if he's all there. But he appears to be okay for the main part. Okay. Did they have a particular place that they were that they they were trying to take you, or did they just like drag you down and leave you in the sand? He he seems to be kind of babbling, not making sense. He he's unsure, like he's still in shock or something. The walls are closing, and the sounds, the the, the rocks, the, the the hands grabbing. He just, Everything disappearing. Just, like he's not really making much sense here. Okay. I have a question for you guys. Is this thing taking bikes according to number, like one, two, three, or is it just grabbing random bikes? A a as far as we can tell, it's just taking random bikes, one of them says. What bikes are left? Uh, they kind of stand up and look about. Eight, the one you're right next to. Uh, four, uh, five, and I think twelve had the com rune, as well as of course the main payload with the tank, and the one tank you're, you know, right there at, or like you know, not too far off of the one that's in the sand. So there's no way of predicting which one it'll take next. I don't think so, one of them says. Okay. Well, unfortunately, I have no clue what these things are. are just like you, I'm as clueless as you guys. But we can't exactly hide here forever, so we've got to figure out a way to get rolling again. Well... For the time being, we're the payload stuck. The bikes are pretty free, but we can dig those out by hand. It's the payload that's stuck. If we can get the payload moving, I'm sure we can all get on our way. The payload's too far buried. Too far buried? You, he points over and shows you how the treads are literally all stuck in the sand. Like it's accumulated with the dust and all that. The treads are well buried in under all the desert sand. Huh. Uh, the two dwarfs take that one... The seven, the gibbering dwarf, they kind of all head back to the upside down tank. You just quickly get inside. Eight huddles back inside his bike. As they try to treat Seven to see if he's okay, try to snap him out of it and whatnot. I want to look around and investigate. Try and see if they left any marks on on what what vehicle they might be taking next. Um. You get maybe one or two dwarfs kind of join you as to look about as uh, the general thinks that's a good idea and tells everyone to look for markings and such, signs. Everyone start looking things over and nothing really seems to 
point out to anybody. General says, I don't think they're planned. I think they're random. But what do they want with bikes? What do they want with their machines? I don't necessarily think that these are monsters. I think they might be people. Using what, monsters as a cover. What kind of people could control monsters like these, he says. You'd be surprised. I've met some pretty wacky, pretty powerful people. I'm sure, as an accountant, you've met a lot of people. Right. He says. Yeah. <laughs> yes, just the other day I took down a giant clockwork thingy monster. Right, he says, not being convinced by that phrase. He seems to kind of ignore you and go back to attending to everybody else. Um, no one seems to really find anything. No one seems to come up with anything. Everything looks as well normal as could be for the time being. Um, to which another large clap of thunder is heard and you look towards the south. Another storm approaches. Everyone hurriedly runs back to a vehicle. One of them kind of tugs on you. Come on, we gotta get inside. I go ahead and follow. W what do you get into? Who do you follow? I'm gonna get into one of the bikes. Just okay. There's uh, twelve where you got the com rune from. Four, that's just off of the nose of the payload. Five, who's off to the side of the payload, and eight, the one where you were just at behind the payload. I'll get in with eight. He just watched one of his best friends get eaten. All right, you hop in with eight. Eight seems very stressed, very panicked as you'd expect. As this storm hits and dust swirls up again, lightning strikes and these bellows, these haunting little monster guttural bellows echo out again. You can hear the general over the radio very upset. We can't keep doing this. He'll just keep picking us off. And you hear another one chime up. But sir, seven wasn't eaten like the others. Is there any way I can peek out and see if, if spot them and see if they're going after anyone? Yes, you peek outside enough to know what you're looking for now and happen to see just about five or six dunes just start shifting. They do not appear to be focused. They just seem to be all about. Mm. Um. I just want to keep watching them, observing them, trying to see if I see anything, notice anything about them, notice a pattern or anything. Right. Um... You keep a good watch out trying to predict a pattern or something of the sort. You see eight in here with you start getting very antsy. Start almost not making sense, like he's frustrated or upset or something. To which she starts making, take my friend, well, he's, I'll need to just go ahead until he just, like, out of nowhere, he flings this hatch open and just jumps off this bike and starts bolting it out just in generally towards these dunes like he's lost it him. you instantly run after him he starts running out here take me take me instead you bastard he's lost it I just start screaming at these things kind of semi chasing after him none of them really seem interested in him like none of them are darting in his direction or anything of the sort Is there any more visibility than there was last time? No, you, visibility gets cut down you, as soon as you step outside. You're pretty sure the bike's still behind you, but you can't really see it too well. <laughs> Another large crack of lightning illuminates one of them jumping in the distance. I'm going to try and 
and drag the door in, or another door for another monster. You just said one of them jumping in the distance. Are you talking about a door for a oh, monster? Uh, one of the creatures. Okay. I am going to try and drag my dwarven friend back to his bike. Right, you start doing so with this guy kind of shouting and he's off the deep end kind of deal. Uh, he says, why spare seven? Why him? Why kill the others? He's just, he's not having a good day right now. Seven, get back in the bike. We'll figure out something. That's why I'm here. I'm here to help. This is actually eight you're dragging. Seven's oh, in eight. the tank. All right. <laughs> Still, same thing to eight. Mm -hmm. um, he kind of submits a little bit, but he doesn't appear to be wanting to walk back. Like, you're literally still dragging him. You managed to get him to the bike, but he is not willing enough to climb. You want to try and haul him in? Yeah. Roll, <laughs> a, D haul Roll a D20 for strength. Ten. You try to pick him up by the back of his, like, collar, and you lose your grip and just drop him flat on his butt. He just kind of submits, like he's just sitting there and sulking now. Want to try again? Um, yeah, I want to try and get him to safety. Roll it again. Three, I give up. You now realize he is not budging, like he is just trying to be dead weight at this point. He's just sitting there like he is out of it. Um, you see another large dune come close in your direction, like it's going to swoop right by you. Um... This thing, you now notice, starts circling the large tank halfway in the ground. As it start, starts to circle, a few more join in and basically start creating this small little whirlpool of sand to the extent where this tanker starts sinking into the ground ever so slowly. Okay, is the bike that I was in still operable? Uh, you believe this bike here is probably operable. It may be a little bit stuck, but you believe it it, it does function. I am going to try and use the bike. Alright, you settle into the driver's seat. It looks a little complicated, but you believe you can pretty much find everything you need to make this thing go. Tell me what you plan to do first. Uh, Go down with the tanker. Okay. No uh, one said I was intelligent. Well, roll to find the ignition. Nineteen. Good enough. You start this bad boy up. Uh, roll to find the uh, accelerator or throttle. Uh, actually, I wanted to just kind of drive around the the dunes and try and distract them. Well, you still got to get going. Well, I know. <laughs> okay. I know. I know. I got fifteen. Alright, you managed to find it now. Roll to see if you know how the how this 